Welcome to the DIY series, how to build your food truck with me, Frank Valtieres, and I'm showing you step by step how to build your own food truck, your own food trailer, because that's what we have here is a food trailer, seven by 16, that's gonna be a full mobile kitchen on wheels. And this is where I show you how to do it yourself. In today's video, what we're doing, besides taking out this annoying plastic or protective film on here that really does like to take off, I'm gonna be showing you how I installed the stainless steel. Don't forget that every truck or every trailer is completely different in the aspect of my, like my measurements. So I'm not gonna show you measurements because it's irrelevant because I almost guarantee that your trailer will not be exactly like mine. But I will show you how I'm installing the stainless steel, how I do it step by step, how I cut it, how I go through like a bunch of metal cutting wheels on the four and a half inch grinder. And also as a bonus, I'm gonna be installing these wire mold boxes that we use to run our electrical. I'm just gonna install them. I'm not gonna show you how to put the outlets and switches yet. That'll probably be in the next video just so you guys can come back and visit me on uh, the DIY series, how to build your food truck. And again, thank you for subscribing. Thank you for sharing the videos. And let me show you real quick how we install these wire mold boxes. And I'll also show you how we install the stainless steel sheets. So now that we have the electrical ran or all the wires on the rough end completed, now comes the stainless steel. And I've been on this debate for like back and forth. Do I start with the ceiling? Do I start with the walls? Do I start with the ceiling? Do I start with the walls? <laughs> and I'm like, there's no right or wrong. Uh, so we're gonna go with the walls. That way I can put the breaker panel right away on there and we can get this all lit up and everything. So we're gonna put the walls in next, the stainless steel walls. They're gonna go all along right here, all along right there. And then we're gonna come on to the right side right here. So I have all my sheets of stainless steel outside here in my yard. I've had them out here for, it seems like a while now to be honest, because they were in my way in the garage and it's easier to cut out here. I bought these saw horses that are right here. These are really nice if uh, you wanna cut outside and use it outside. So let's unwrap it and see how it looks because water didn't get inside it, I hope. Oh. Alrighty, let's see the moment of truth. Are you guys still dry, not rusted, looking good? Oh, there it is. Perfect, they're 10 feet long. I believe they're 18 or 20 gauge. Stainless steel, 304 or 316. I gotta double check, I bought them about last year. I bought them at about $100 a sheet. Uh, so it was about a thousand eleven hundred bucks for all these sheets right here The other question that I've asked myself is do I go Horizontal with them as I've done before on my other two trailers. I connected horizontal horizontal or do I switch it up and do I go vertical 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 and I was playing around with my numbers if you guys can see here I'm marking out like what makes more sense what looks What's better right more efficient use of the stainless steel? And what's going to use less transition pieces because the transition pieces, the stainless steel transition pieces that connect one sheet to the other, they're pretty pricey as well. So on this one, I've decided to go vertical. I'm going to go up and down, up and down, up and down. And uh, hopefully that was the best decision that I've made on how to use this stainless steel. So that's another thing that you guys have to decide. Do you guys want to go vertical or horizontal? Right here, what I'm doing is I'm marking out and measuring the notches that I have here for my electrical outlets and switches. That way I just transfer them right over to the stainless steel. What I'm and doing I'm up top is just getting the wire out of the way. And also at the bottom here, what I'm doing is marking out where the studs are for future reference. So this will officially be the last time that we see the trailer with no walls, like no stainless steel, no ceiling. Uh, oh man, it's, it's, it's getting there, it's getting there, slowly but surely. But the electrical's done, stainless steel's next, as I mentioned, and what I was doing here earlier is I was just putting down all my measurements. That way I don't have to measure them twice when I'm taking these and I'm putting them on the stainless steel because you just transfer the measurements over to there. And when you come over here, if you forget, you don't have to measure it again. But those are all the measurements of all these things that are here, like these outlets and things like that. And it makes it so much easier to be able to uh, just come back and just look at it. Ah, there it is, instead of taking the tape measure out couple times and doing it so that's a little trick that I learned but this officially is the last time that we see the trailer empty like this uh, disregard all the garbage but there you go 
So what I do now is I bring all my measurements that I had previously done and I transfer them over to the stainless steel, mark everything out uh, and make sure that it all lines up correctly. And then what I do next is I start trimming everything with my angle grinder. I put a metal cutoff wheel. I go through a lot of these. So make sure you buy the big pack. That way you can uh, have extras and just keep going and I have to stop when you go through blades and blades and blades. So now after we take out the protective film, we bring it on over inside the trailer. These things are heavy, so make sure that uh, you brace yourself. Also, I'm not doing it here, but I learned my lesson. Wear some gloves because the edges on these sometimes can be pretty sharp and you can uh, cut a little bit off your skin and you'll be bleeding all over the place. So make sure you wear some gloves if you have them accessible. I didn't learn this until maybe the last piece where it sliced off some stuff. <laughs> So when you bring in your stainless steel, make sure that you don't damage the wires, the skin, and uh, the stainless steel. Sometimes it can be sharp, so just make sure that you are aware of that. You look at everything that you do, that it comes through the hole correctly, that all your alignments are proper. And uh, then we're going to put the electrical box on here, and we're going to align that, and then we're going to install that, get it ready to go so we can power it up. On the cutout here that I did for the electrical panel, I'm gonna tell you right now what I'm using here to be able to protect that cable even more. So there we go, the electrical panel is secure now. It's not going anywhere. We got four screws on there, the number uh, 12, three quarters self-tapping stainless steel. One thing that I did add on there that I don't think I showed you all was this rubber electrical tape that I, I was looking for something to put on there to be able to protect the cable because that's the number one goal of this is to protect the cable because the fine fittings in like this type of work is a little bit trickier right than just a regular house so you have to get creative and make it safe so i put this rubber electrical tapes made by scotch 33 well it's, this is not scotch 33 this is a Sc actually, scotch 2242 i use 33 and regular electrical tape but this is rubber electrical tape let me see if it'll focus in right there and it's really thick and uh, it works really well in this particular application is it, it gives it a lot more protection right there so that's something that you can use and it's something that will really help you if you find yourself in a pinch and don't know how to protect these wires or you don't have something else that can do the job this is something that can help so for me, I was able to find a deal on these stainless steel sheets, but as you can see, the corners are a little bit rough on here, so you have to kind of flatten them out, and uh, that's the price you pay for getting good deals sometimes. We bring in the second sheet now. It's pretty much the same concept as the first sheet. You measure, you cut, and then make sure you measure twice because you don't want to mess up these stainless steel sheets. They are pretty expensive, and that'll be just you ruining maybe like 100, 200 bucks. So here we are at Menards, wire mold shopping. So I got the two gang boxes right here. I got six of them. And then I got three of the deep single gang boxes. That is what's gonna cover all the outlets and switches in the new food truck build right here. All right, so here we are and the update for the stainless steel. I have three sheets up. And if you can see here, these little pieces are called the transition pieces. Stainless steel transition pieces. I bought these on Amazon right here. They're a little bit on the pricier side. However, they make the two sheets, right? Obviously the transition between them look really, really smooth, really professional. And it's a great investment to use, to be honest. I didn't have it on mine because I didn't even know they existed until I saw it in another restaurant. And then I looked it up and I found these, but it was too late to add them to my food truck. But I've been using these and I much recommend them. It's gonna be an extra expense, but it's gonna look really nice. So now we're gonna start on that last piece right there. And after that, to be honest, we can throw the hood up if we wanted to, or just keep going on the sheets on the right side and the front. So we'll make that decision after I finish here. It's a little bit toasty inside the trailer. So we're making it little by little. Towards the end of this video, as a bonus, I'm gonna show you how I installed these wire mold boxes, give you a in-depth explanation on how I put them on and screwed them on. All right, so the biggest tip that I can give you when working around the stainless steel and it has a protective film and you're about to take it off either here outside before you install it or when you have it installed is wait for it to get warm out or 
heat up the trailer inside where it's really really warm and then when you take this off you're not going to get that glue residue that usually is left here yesterday i tried to take it off and i was noticing that it was leaving some residue behind so i stopped literally as you guys can see right there there's little like patches or whatever and i waited for today to get warmer and look at this just moving right along and that's the tip that i can give you like honestly that i wish somebody would have told me in the beginning when i built my first food truck because i wouldn't have struggled as much so there you go that's my tip of the day and the process just keeps going and going you cut you take out the protective film you install take out the protective film install same concept over and over again with every sheet cutting around like the concession window you want to try to grab some of the best spares that you have you don't want to cut a full sheet here because those will come in handy when you're doing the ceiling i like to put full sheets on the ceiling so make sure you use good spares and again i'll link all the products that i use in the description especially these cutoff wheels i use quite a bit of these so make sure you have a bunch in hand we continue on with the installation this is going above the concession window and also we're going to put another piece below the concession window uh, the question that i do get a lot is do you use any glue or adhesive underneath the stainless steel i do not i haven't had any issues with it um, so i can't really say that having it will be any better or not i just can't really recommend that I do use a lot of the screws. I bought about seven little cases of screws because you go through them quite rapidly. So make sure that you stock up. That way you don't run out in case you uh, in case they're back ordered. I've I've seen it where they're back ordered on Amazon. So make sure that you order quite a significant amount if you want to put a uh, good screw amount into your stainless steel. And these little dividers and these little end caps that come as a transition, man, they are life savers. That's all I can say. I can't show you or I won't show you how to how to like cut every piece because every truck is different. You might not have the same measurements that I do, but the general idea is the same. So we made, made progress on the driver's side. That's where my hood's going to go right there. And this is the passenger side. I just finished this sheet yesterday. I haven't put it into place yet. And the other option that I did find that I didn't have on my first food, food truck is these dividers. Those are nice. They're really pricey, but they are nice. And then right here I have the end caps that I add on there. So you can get really accurate on the measurements and it's going to take you a little bit longer. Kind of like I like to do here. I like to get really, really accurate into every, every crevice almost. Or you can just, as they say, slap it on but it just depends on your work style and what you want to do and the final outcome of how you want your truck to look but that's the progress we've been making on this food truck on the stainless steel so let's continue putting it on and then we're done so i'm going to show you how we use these self tapping screws that we have here they're number 12 stainless steel self tapping screws these are the ones that i continuously keep using because they work really well they have a good I guess you could say width to the screw as well as length it doesn't go through the trailer to the other side or your truck and one thing that i did differently in this food truck that i haven't done before like i did on my first one is i use a level now to get like all the screws at the same like visual uh aesthetics right that look really nice and level my my truck they're like all over the place the, not that it's wrong it's just if you want it to look a certain way you want them all to be uh, level and at the same spot. So this is a stainless steel piece I put in yesterday. It's more towards the back of the trailer uh, Right by the concession window as you can see here. So we're just gonna take our level and then We're gonna make sure that obviously we're level So we can get all the screws that look somewhat the same so we're gonna go there And then we're gonna go back here one thing that you do want to mark out that I that I do is the studs of the trailer. I don't like to drill into the studs of the trailer because one, it's, it's, it's a lot harder to do. And when you drill into like the plywood, if you have good plywood in the back, then it should be enough to hold the stainless in. So we're gonna take our cobalt drill bit right here. You wanna make sure you don't, that you have it kinda not as long out, that way you don't go through to the trailer on the other side. And then we're gonna do this side right here. All 
Alrighty, so those are our two pilot holes that we use. Make sure that it's a cobalt drill bit because they consider stainless steel a hard metal. And now we're gonna take our square drill bit that we have on our impact driver and our number 12 three quarter self tapping stainless steel screw. And just like that, that's exactly how we do each and every single one of them. I haven't shown you how I do every single screw because Then you guys probably click off the video and don't watch it because it's the same thing over and over and over again. You just gotta put a lot of screws as you see here. You gotta put a lot of screws all over the place. Same concept everywhere that you go. Level, measure, level, measure. And like down here, you have the wheel well. So what I did is I take the bandsaw that I have here. I have a Milwaukee bandsaw. And what I do, is I cut the tip off right here. So then it only turns into a half inch, 12, number 12 half inch. So I cut that tip off right there. And then that way, uh, if you hit like a stud or something, you wanna drill through it, that way it stays only at uh, half inch and you don't go all the way through. So that's like a little tip that I use, especially like all the way down here just so you guys are aware of that. But that's the progress we're making on the stainless steel. So far, so good. Uh, the hard part is up here because it is heavy. This stuff is really heavy, but it is really durable. So here we are on a Saturday night. And what are we doing? We're pulling protective film off of the stainless steel. The next sheet that's gonna go up, this one's actually going towards the front where um, the water pump outlet's gonna be right, right there. And then this one is a switch for the water pump outlet with the little outlet right there. Um, so that's what we're doing on a Saturday night. Look at this, pulling this protective film. It takes quite a bit of time, just so you know. I only work to pull this because it comes off sometimes in little chunks. Sometimes it co comes off nice and, um, yeah, see, sometimes it comes off in really big chunks, sometimes in little ones. So just so you know, it takes a little bit of time to pull the protective film off get it ready to put on so every day my goal is to make or get one sheet ready to put on for the next day or i can put it on that same day that's my goal because i only work on it part time so that way when you get a time frame of how long it takes this is how long it's taking me to put this one sheet one day one at a time incredible to see not my mess not my mess don't look at my mess here but incredible to see that last week this was all plywood right here on the left side on the right side and the only part that we have left for the interior is this front part right here and it gets a little bit trickier on this more of a flat front because on the roof here it runs like at an angle like up here so i'm gonna cut this one into different pieces of maybe about three pieces so we're gonna put the bottom uh, two pieces just because I want to use the big pieces up here in the roof so you I only have about four or five sheets left they go quick so I need to kind of get creative on the front here but it's fine because the three compartment sink is going to sit right in the front so we can get a little creative on how we kind of piece it together like Tetris make it look professional maybe make it look really nice and then we'll be done with every single wall piece on here the driver's side and the passenger side.
wire mold boxes that we're installing, there's two different kinds that I use. I use this one called the two gain, where you can fit either like a switch and an outlet or an outlet and an outlet. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of things you can do in this little space. And this is the other one that's like a single that we're probably gonna use for like a single outlet. So those are the two that I use quite a bit. This is gonna be a double and a double, and there's a lot of doubles in this truck everywhere. But for now, let me show you how I, how I put these and how I do it. So these wire mold boxes, they come with their own little screws right here. And they come with this bracket in the back, just like this, if I can take it out. So this metal plate comes off the back of the wire mold box, and this is used kind of to anchor to the wall. And what I do here is I take, you can take whatever you want. I just take a pair of uh, my strippers, and I like these because they act like almost like little pliers. And I just take out that middle part right there, as you can see. Ah. Here we go. So we take out that metal piece right there. You just got to kind of twist it and yank it and pull it around, and it'll come off just like that. And then what we do is, as I said, this is like the, the bracket that gets held to the wall. You take all your wires and just put them right in through the middle, as such. And then we take our cobalt, we take our cobalt drill bit. Just make sure it's a cobalt drill bit. And we drill right in here, anywhere we want. Like that. set this right there and then we just take our drill bit that's why you want to drill a pilot hole first because it makes it so much easier to put the, the self tapper in there and then we take our level if you're as precise as I am I like to get them all precise because you're gonna look at these look at these for a long time you just gotta make sure it's level and then you take your drill bit again drill you pilot a hole and then you put the second one in there and there's that part right there and then last but not least you take the four screws that come in the wire mold box they're already in here so you don't have to look for them just make sure you don't lose them because you'll be in for a major mission on how to put it together you put it like that, as such, and then you take your screwdriver, hold on. This right here, this right here is one of my favorite tools to have. As I've mentioned in previous videos, it's a Lennox 9-in-1. I could have used a drill, but uh, then I had to change the head on it and everything, and this doesn't take a lot of threads. So you just kind of twist it. You do it to all four corners. Just like that. Take the number third one. I'm gonna link these in the description. That way you guys can buy them as well. If you guys go this route, some people like to pipe outside, like put pipe on the outside of the wall. I don't really like that look, but it's all preference. And there you go. That's how you install a wire mold box. Uh, as, you as I mentioned, you can use it on different parts of the trailer. I'm gonna use it over here, over there. Um, and then on the next video, what we're gonna be doing is installing the switches and the outlets. On this one particularly, on my truck, it's gonna have two switches, one for the inside and one for the outside lights. Um, but you can coordinate however you want on your trailer. There's no right or wrong. Again, thank you for subscribing to the channel. Any questions that you have, please drop them in the comments. That's the best way to reach me because I answer each and every one myself. Um, and again, this series is to help you out, to help you with any questions, to give you the, the knowledge and the belief that you can build it yourself as well without having to hire somebody if you um, wanna go that route. You can always buy one that's ready. To be honest, it's not that much more fun. It's fun to build it yourself, and then you drive it around and you're like, ah, it's so cool that I was able to build this food truck by myself with my own sweat equity. So once again, thanks again, Frank Valtieres with the video series, How to Build Your Food Truck.